Hi, I'm Tony with Wakefield Biochar, and on this episode of Outstanding with Wakefield, I'm introducing you to the Columbia Center for Urban Agriculture and its park director, Tony Minnick. Now, CCUA is tackling food security with its unique agricultural park right in the middle of Missouri. They're educating the community about the food they eat, and they're serving tens of thousands of pounds of fresh vegetables to those in need every year. Now, soil health is critical to their success, and biochar is part of the plan. Here we go. Let's share stories from farmers, growers, doers, and dreamers. Stories from those who aren't afraid to get their hands dirty and aren't afraid to try something new. Stories of the best uses and the best users of biochar. And we will find them outstanding with Wakefield. How did you get into urban agriculture? I uh, did my undergrad up in Chicago in environmental science and had an opportunity to work for a student farm, um, student-led farm, where we did everything from chicken care in the mornings to um, the seeding and the planting and harvesting for all the local kitchens and the university and just fell in love with the work and found that agriculture can be such a great way to address directly a lot of the environmental concerns of today. How is the team here with CCUA doing things differently than other agricultural parks? A really cool part of our organization's setup here at Columbia's Agriculture Park is that we're actually in a City of Columbia City Park. So we have the partnership with City Parks and Recreation as well as the city to have help with you know, running events. They'll help us pour concrete, install benches, do all the Parks and Rec stuff that helps get more people out to see our work, gets more people out into our farm field gets more people, you know, down in the soil doing the work we're so excited about. You include biochar in your farming. How is it making a difference? Um, the biochar we use at the agriculture park is kind of one of the big pieces of the pie in our um, approach to soil fertility. So a big part of what biochar is going to offer our soil by putting it in there um, is a really complex habitat for all the microbes in the soil that do the nutrient cycling to make all that our plants need available to our plants. Can you tell us a little bit of how you apply biochar? Yeah, on a given volunteer shift morning when we're transplanting a bed of seedlings, let's say it's lettuce seedlings from our greenhouse, we'll be create, you know, using kind of a triangle hoe to create trenches down the length of our 100 foot long beds. Let's say it's three rows of lettuces that we're planting. So we'll make those trenches and down in that trench, which is gonna be that right in the root zone pocket for those lettuce seedlings, we'll sprinkle a layer of biochar. We're, we're ultimately working up to about 5% by volume of our beds being biochar. So we add incrementally every year and that's going down right in the root zone where we lay a mineral mix that's also combined with a little bit more biochar atop that. And these are minerals that based on soil testing we've addressed, you know, we know we need to address. And then um, a little bit of compost on top of that. And the idea with this layering system is that the biochar, which is this, again, uh, high porosity sponge basically of carbon in the soil, it's going to be catching all those minerals and that uh, leachings from that compost. Um, and this is going to be a nice little mixture right down in the root zone for those plants. For beginner gardeners that want to use biochar, what tips can you share? I think one thing to consider is that biochar and its production is often left a you know really stable carbon source that doesn't necessarily have a lot of plant fertility paired with it. So it's kind of like an empty sponge that needs to be filled. It needs to be kind of charged up before adding to the plants and in the root zone. So whether it's a kind of organic all-purpose blend of a fertilizer you might get at a big box store or maybe you're soil testing and you have a specific list of amendments you're adding to target imbalances in your soil. You want to put that fertility, stir it up with that biochar and put that into the soil as a pairing because um, those things are going to work synergistically together to give each one more of a positivity. So Tony, how does it make you feel to do work that makes a difference in the community? So for us, you know, I, I used to work farmers markets and really got that warm, fuzzy feeling on a Saturday morning, getting to meet and interact with the people that were about to cook up the produce I was growing that day. Um, but a lot of that, uh, that feeling is really a part of urban agriculture where the, you know, the community is coming out every day to do that work here, learning along the way, bringing those skills back home, 
Um, and ultimately, within our fence here, where we have our production farm, that's about an acre, we're donating over 30,000 pounds of grade A fresh produce every year. So um, just knowing that we're able to keep a steady stream during the growing season of super beautiful fresh food that um, people are leaving the pantry excited about makes me feel great and makes our team, I think, want to work hard and keep this work going. That was an amazing example of how biochar creates a better soil and a better world. If you know of any outstanding uses or users of biochar, let us know in the comments or through our website, wakefieldbiochar.com. We might be able to feature them on an upcoming episode. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next Outstanding with Wakefield.